Welcome to our YouTube video series on legal terminology. In this video, we will be discussing the common law term caveat emptor, which is derived from the Latin term meaning let the buyer beware. The term caveat emptor is, in its most basic form, serves as a warning to buyers that they will have no recourse as against the seller if the property or product that they purchase fails to meet their expectations. The origins of caveat emptor are often tracked back to the 1603 English court decision in Chandler v. Lopez. In Chandler v. Lopez, the plaintiff Lopez purchased what he believed to be a bezoar stone from the defendant Chandler, who was a goldsmith. Chandler claimed the purchased object was a bezoar stone having magical healing properties, but this proved false. Chandler made no warranty and it was not known whether Chandler himself believed the object to be a bizarre stone. Lopez brought an action against Chandler. The King's Bench ruled in favor of Lopez. The case then came before the Exchequer ch Chamber on appeal. The Exchequer Court held that Lopez had no right to his money back, saying, quote, The bare affirmation that it was a bizarre stone, without warranting it to be so, is no cause of action, end quote. This in turn leads to the longer Latin statement, caveat emptor, quia ignora no debui quod jus alenum emit, meaning, let a purchaser beware, for he ought not to be ignorant of the nature of the property which he is buying from another party. The assumption is that buyers will inspect and otherwise ensure that they are confident with the integrity of the product or land to which it often refers before completing a transaction. On this base level, we will look to the words of Professor Laskin to the application of the common law doctrine, where he aptly stated, quote, absent fraud, mistake, or misrepresentation, a purchaser takes existing property as he finds it, whether it is dilapidated, bug infested, or otherwise uninhabitable or deficient in expected amenities, unless he protects himself by contract terms, end quote. Naturally, as this is common law term, it is subject to court precedent, statutory legislation, such as consumer protection laws, and contractual delineation that makes caveat emptor subject to considerable limitations and considerations such that the basic common law definition does not necessarily work as intended in practice. And people need to be aware of this reality before blindly looking at the caveat emptor term and its application in the real world. Meanwhile, one of the more common exemptions from the doctrine of caveat emptor is that a vendor will be held liable for undisclosed latent defects that would render a property dangerous or otherwise unfit for its intended usage. Such defects are understood to be latent if they would not be discovered by conducting a reasonable inspection and making reasonable inquiries about the property. Now, even though it is a responsibility of the purchaser to investigate the real property they are looking to acquire and protect themselves through contract, there have been court decisions that would suggest a responsible vendor should consider where, whether to disclose latent defects to a prospective purchaser. Thereupon, it becomes a question as to what latent defects there is an obligation to disclose, being primarily those that could adversely impact the intended use of the property and which are known to the vendor or which they have recklessly disregarded. With that being said, the importance of inspecting the property prior to the acquisition and attaining contractual protections should be a priority for any purchaser given the concerns that may flow from the vendor's assertion of caveat emptor and the avoidable legal challenges that would be necessitated to counter the common law claim of caveat emptor even where the purchaser is ultimately successful. Thank you.